I'm going to give you a tool for moving your dream from possibility into real probability and from probability into predictability. I'm also going to give you some case studies. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories about real people and real results. And then I'm going to give you a very, very simple, in fact, deceptively simple tool that you can use over and over and over again to move your life forward. And then I'm going to invite you to come and hang out with me for a weekend in Washington, D.C. on October 18th, 19th, and 20th. All right, let's get into today's teaching. So case studies. Now remember, this is all based in what we're doing here, which is taking an idea you have, a dream you have, for a life you'd love living. What you would love your health to be like, and your relationships to be like, and what you're doing with your time and talent. And when you look at your calendar and you look at your checkbook, seeing what you love right there in your checkbook, right there on your calendar. You, you love your life so much that you want to pinch yourself that numerous times during the day, what's rising up from within you is this feeling, I love my life. I love my life. Now, if that's not happening on a regular, repeatable basis, it's not because the power to live a life you love living has gone anywhere. It's just that you've been out of touch with it, and I can promise you this. The world you're in does not support you living a life you love living. It supports you living a life that the economy says you can live, or that your parents believed you could live, or that in a world where money doesn't grow on trees, you can live. And most people, sadly, not only live, but die under those misconceptions about really just, in fact, who you are and how your life can be. So I'm going to give you, I promise, two case studies two real people, and two real results, all right? And the first case study is gonna be me. So back in time, I've been studying this for about a decade, and I thought I knew a lot about this. I had what I've come to call now the I know that syndrome, that I had a lot of, oh, I know that, I know that, but my life did not bear witness to those results. I could speak about prosperity, but my life was unstuck. I could dream a dream of a work that was really making a difference in a significant number of people's lives, but the work I was doing did not yet reflect that. And I knew about these things, I could even be pretty articulate about them. And I could even stand as an expert in them to my friends and family. But I knew deep down that if my results weren't reflecting that knowing, that I only knew about it and I didn't yet really know it, that I would know these things when my life showed these things. So one day, I was thinking about how to have this little center that I had started grow. And I'd been unstuck for all three, four years by then, and we had 30 to 40 people on a regular repeating basis. But I thought by then we'd have three or 400 people being interested in ideas that transform your life. I thought all I had to do was open the doors and people would just flood in. Maybe you've had a dream. Maybe you've had an idea and you thought all you had to do was do a little something and it was just all going to happen. Well, it wasn't happening, and I thought, well, what could I do so that more people would know about what's happening here each week? Because I'm just sure if more people knew, they would want to be here. And the idea to run an ad, well, I had run a bunch of ads, and that was expensive in those days. Uh, I had put up some flyers, and they hadn't really reaped the results, and I'd invited the people who were coming to tell their friends, and we'd see a trickle here or a trickle there, but nothing, it was still, I didn't really realize that I had a thermostat that was stuck on 40 people. but. You know, it would take me a while to begin to figure that out and how I could open up my own self-image to reflect the dream that I really had. But I'm, you know, pretty much slugging it out with circumstance at this point in my life. But then this idea comes and I thought, well, what could I do? What could I do? And I made myself stay in that question. What could I do so that more people would know about this? And an idea came to me. On that frequency of the question, what can I do? You will have a different idea attract itself. You'll be attractive to an idea that's harmonious with more expanded result. So as I made myself <coughs> stay on the frequency of what could I do, an idea came to mind. Well, you could invite a famous person who would come and speak in Portland. You could, you could in a hotel, sell a whole bunch of tickets because a whole bunch of people would come to see a famous person. And then you could tell them, you could introduce that famous person, and at the end you could say, and if you like this, come see what we're doing on, uh, on the weekends, and give them the address. Uh, that's a good idea. And the most famous person I knew, I didn't know personally at the time, but I knew about was a man named Wayne Dyer. And so it took a while, we didn't have the internet, this is like 80, 83 or 4, uh, it took a while for me to find his office in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to give a call to his uh, office, and his assistant, Maya, answered the phone. 
and I introduced myself and I said I was in Oregon and I was had started a center and I wondered if it would be possible in the next year for Dr. Dyer to come to Portland, Oregon and to uh, do an evening and I told her my dream and why I wanted to do it and his assistant said, well, that sounds wonderful. Well, let me check Dr. Dyer's schedule for next January. I think I called in the spring, maybe March, April, somewhere in there. And she's, well, he does have three different dates you could pick from in January of next year. And then she uh, gave me the dates and I'm looking and I think, wow, that Friday night would be great. And so she said, all right, well, Dr. Dyers uh, always flies first class. I always fly with him. So you would need to buy two first class tickets from Fort Lauderdale to Portland, Oregon and back. And inside my head, I could hear ka-ching. And I took a breath. I said, okay, I can do that. Two first class tickets. And she said, and of course, he only stays in five-star properties. So you would need to have two rooms because I'm his assistant in for two or three nights in the five-star property while we're there. Ka-ching, ka-ching. Like, okay, I can do that. And I'm, I'm noticing the pitch of my voice getting a little higher because as we become usually more fearful, uh, our throat closes down. I'm like, okay, I could do that. And then she said, and Dr. Dyer's speaking fee is $15,000. Well, my believing just wasn't big enough to get around $15,000. It might as well have been $150,000 to me. And so I just shut down and I said, I'll, I'll get back to you. And I got off the phone and I went into Mope and Dope. Now maybe some of you have experienced that where you move into mope and dope regarding a situation. But I didn't stay on that frequency. I said, what can I do? What can I do? And an idea came to me. Well, you could at least, if you were going to introduce him, you'd want to be introduce him well. You've never even heard a seminar. Call his office back and see if you can order a seminar um, on, on cassette tape in those days. So I called his office. Literally, I pretended to be somebody else. I used a different voice. And I ordered a cassette series that he had done uh, of recording a seminar he had done. I listened to that, but I didn't listen to that from the woman who wished she could bring Wayne Dyer. I listened to that from the woman who was imagining herself on the stage introducing him. That woman heard different ideas than the woman who was wishing and hoping Wayne Dyer would come, but she didn't have $15,000. This is a clue. If you've been wishing and hoping for something and you don't think you can do it, you will not have the same ideas as if you imaginally put yourself inside the picture of being the woman who's doing it, being the man who's doing it. I got an idea. I heard a story about him taking a plane uh, out of Fort Lauderdale, having engine trouble, doing an emergency landing, trying to get rebooked to Chicago where he was supposed to speak for 5,000 people that night and there were no more bookings. They said, we're going to get you out in the morning. He said, I got to talk to somebody here who doesn't believe it's impossible. Eventually they brought in a supervisor. He said, I know you've been told it's impossible to get me a seat to Chicago today. There's 5,000 people expecting me. When you get on the computer, just hold the corner of your mind open to the possibility. There could be a routing nobody else has thought of. She got on the computer, two minutes later she had it found. Boom! And he was on his way to Chicago. Because I was the woman imagining introducing him, an idea came to me. Write him a letter. Dear Dr. Dyer, my name is. While I can guarantee you first class airfare and first class accommodations at this moment, I cannot guarantee you the $15,000. However, I can guarantee you this, I, the first class accommodations, the first class travel, and this $1,000, and I wrote a check for $1,000 and I put it in that envelope. And I said, and if you don't believe that you can come and speak to me on these terms, then I'm wondering if there's somebody in your office I could talk to, somebody who doesn't believe it's impossible. And I signed it. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, I got that letter back in the mail, the very letter, only in big, bold, black felt pen, he had written, you're on, Mary. And <laughs> that was how I met Wayne Dyer. And that was how I began to launch my work in a greater way. It didn't happen to me, it happened with me. What can I do with what I do have? I am this person doing this. And that's you. And that's you. The second case study is about a woman named Felicia who became a client of mine a few years ago. And Felicia had been on a stuck frequency for 15 years making the exact same money every year. And she was making $50,000. And as she wanted to liberate herself and she wanted to be more useful to the world, she wanted to give her gift in larger ways. Of course she did because life in her wanted to do that. And of course you do too because life in you wants to liberate you, wants to give you more freedom, more flow, more flexibility, more fun. And so she went through a training process and she began to enter into a new relationship with life which meant a new relationship with the work she was doing and the fun she was having and the life she was living. And there came a moment when she was about to make a big leap financially and her paradigm got a hold of her and began to choke her by the throat and saying things to her like, well, money isn't really spiritual. And, and I mean, why would I, why, you know, why, I don't think I can really charge for this. And, and just wanting to dial her back down to where her comfort zone, which was $50,000 for the work I do. And I helped her take a look at that paradigm to really challenge its reality and its validity in her life. 
And I don't want to give myself the credit because it isn't my credit. I just happen to be able to be privileged to be the one to help her at that moment. She's the one who moved to a new frequency. She's the one who unleashed herself. She's the one who said, what can I do with what I have? And she did. And just 30 days ago, she put in front of me her monthly income statement for the business that she has built by following these, this system and these provable, proven, reliable strategies that I'm bringing to you. And what she produced for me in black and white with a big smile all over her face is, look at this. My monthly income was what my annual income was stuck on for 15 years, only now it's my monthly income. Now, the money is great, but the connectedness to the power that's breathing her is greater. And the gifts she's able to give in the world are more. And so I would just say to you that the power of your dream is calling to you. It's got your name on it. And there is a tool you can use that is deceptively simple, but if you will use it repeatedly, it will open doorways for you. Galaxies will open. I mean that sincerely. Things will open up and occur to you and come to you that you cannot make happen, but you can make welcome by being on the frequency of your dream. And here's a question to ask daily, repeatedly, what step can I take with what I do have to move me forward? What step can I take today? Then take it, take it. I hope you've enjoyed these three videos. They're here for you to repeat and study and take notes on and then apply in your life because it's in the living from them where the real magic happens. Now, we love giving this to you. I personally love giving this to you, but I'd love to give you even